only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine I can only imagine When that day comes And I find myself Standing in the sun I can only imagine When all I would do Is forever Forever worship you I can only imagine, yeah I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine Yeah I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you Jesus? Or in all of you be still Will I stand in your presence Or to my knees will I fall Will I sing hallelujah Will I be able to speak it all I can only imagine Yeah I can only imagine I can only imagine I can only imagine when all I would do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine. Hi, this is Pastor Bernie Miller. The recent pandemic has tested all faiths. Some faiths have tested positive, while others have tested negative. A negative coronavirus test, yeah, that's good, but not when it comes to our faith. A faith that hasn't been tested is a faith that can't be trusted. How is your faith? In Matthew chapter 6, it says, Who by worrying can add to their life? Pandemic. Do not worry about tomorrow. Pagans run after these things. National emergency. Philippians 4 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. My sheets are melting so fast. They just miss a lot. An interesting fact about humanity is that whatever you feed grows. A financial pandemic. If you feed your faith, it grows. If you feed your fears, 
they grow. So all spiral very quickly. It's going to get worse. Some have to live and some have to die. Realize that our time is better spent talking to the Father than getting all worked up and reading and feeding our minds with the news and the media about what everybody is saying about how this is doom and gloom and how money, which we have hoped in, is lost. Hope not in money. Hope in your Father, your God, Jesus Christ, your Savior. Have your faith and use it. Walk according to it. Whatever you feed grows. This is the time to press into the church, lean into the church, to be surrounded by God's people. We can offer prayers for one another. We can offer hope to one another. We can speak words of truth to one another. If you feast on the word of God and you renew your minds around the truth, your faith, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But if you go to the news and you read article after article after quote after talking head and you continue to feed those fears, they grow and get bigger and bigger and bigger. Whatever you feed grows. Today, did you wake up this morning and feast on the word of God and go to him in prayer? Or did you feed your fears? God bless you. Welcome back to All Things Are Possible with your stay-at-home pastor, Bernie Miller. You've heard the phrase, you are what you eat. Well, in Matthew chapter 15 and verse 11, it says, It is not what enters into the mouth that defiles the man, but what proceeds out of the mouth that defiles the man. In computer science, you've heard the term G-I-G-O, garbage in, garbage out. In the Bible, it says, you reap what you sow. Years ago, when I saw that verse of scripture, after I gotten saved, I asked God for crop failure because I realized that I had sown a lot of sin into my life and I had blown a lot of money that could have been used for God's kingdom. But God restored those wasted years and he's continuing to restore those wasted years. And so today, I'm going to ask you something. Do you need restoration in some area in your life? Well, today is the day that you've tuned in at the right time. Let me tell you something. God is going to show us how he can take a person who has sown some things with their mouths and then restore them back to health and give them a, a spirit of refreshing. And I'm speaking of the apostle Peter who denied the Lord Jesus Christ three times and he cursed Jesus after the third time that he denied him. Uh, he, he denied he even knew Jesus Christ. And after his denial, he wept bitterly. Maybe you are there now. You're thinking about some things that you've said to somebody this week, maybe even to your loved one and uh, your child or friend, and, and you feel grieved in your spirit and, and you need to be refreshed and restored. God is going to do it. Just hang in there with this message because that's what he's in the business of doing. That is restoring those things that we have try to destroy. But fortunately, because of you, Jesus has been praying for crop failure in your own personal life because he intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Uh, the Spirit does. And, and Jesus also intercedes for us because he knows exactly what we need and when we need it. Now, I want to share three points with you about the situation when Peter denied Christ. First, Jesus' prophetic prayer. It was a prayer of protection. Next, second, Peter's prophetic presupposition. And three, Jesus's prophetic prediction. Look in Luke chapter 22, verse 31. It says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat. That means separate him from his faith in Jesus. Verse 32, but I have prayed for you. He prayed a prayer of protection for you that your faith may not fail and you, when once you have turned, that means repented, strengthen your brothers. Verse 33, Peter's pathetic presupposition. But he said to him, Lord, with you, I am ready to go both to prison and to death. Verse 34, Peter's overconfidence was met with Jesus' prophetic prediction. And he said to him, I say to you, Peter, the rooster will not crow today until you have denied me three times that you know me. Peter did what Romans chapter 12, verse 3 says we shouldn't do. 
he thought more highly of himself than he should have. Peter did show some courage, though, uh, when Jesus was arrested in John chapter 18 and verse 15. It says, Simon Peter was following Jesus, and so was another disciple. I believe that other disciple was John, because Peter and John were bosom buddies, and you'll see that in Acts. Now that, the, now that disciple was known to the high priest and entered with Jesus into the court of the high priest. But Peter was standing at the outside, the door outside. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the doorkeeper and brought Peter in. Then the slave girl, who kept the door, said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. So apparently either the other disciple had admitted that he was one of Jesus' disciples or they knew he was. Verse 18, now the slaves and the officers were standing there having made a charcoal fire for it was cold and they were warming themselves and Peter was also with them standing and warming himself. What a striking contradiction. Peter to Peter's profession at their last supper in Matthew, where Jesus told the disciples tonight, you will fall away because of me. And in Matthew 26, 33, Peter replied, even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. But Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the disciples said the same thing. Just before Jesus' arrest, he told Peter, John, and James to watch and pray while he went and prayed to his father. He said, watch and pray that you do not fall into temptation. But their eyes were heavy, and uh, they kept falling asleep every time Jesus came back. That's when Jesus said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Peter denied Jesus Christ because his flesh was weak. He was willing, but his flesh was weak. And that's why he failed. Now, here's a thought for you. It is better to fail at trying than to fail to try. But Peter will be reminded of his denial when he sees Jesus, Jesus again by the charcoal fire. Jesus told Peter to strengthen his brothers. Strengthening meant feeding their faith, not feeding them with fish. Look, you can't feed the faithful if you don't feed their faith. Jesus told his disciples to wait for him in Jerusalem. But Peter went back to business as usual, as we saw last week. He went back to fishing. My point this week was, my point last week rather, was business as usual will lead to unmet expectations. Let's review that passage again. John chapter 21, verse 3. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. And they said to him, we will also come with you back to business as usual. They went out and got into the boat and that night they caught nothing. Peter and the seasoned fishermen had fished all night and caught nothing. Why? Because I believe Jesus Christ, the great I am of marine biology with a doctorate in biological oceanography commanded all of the fish around that area to stay away from their nets because I remember what he did with Jonah. Remember what happened when Jonah disobeyed God? God refused to allow him to get away with it. <laughs> when he disobeyed God and refused to go to Nineveh, what did God do? He commanded a large fish to swallow Jonah and take him where he didn't want to, want, want to go for God. And that fish spit him out right there at Nineveh. And he did exactly what God had commanded him to do. When God commands his creation, they always obey. We're the only thing that God has created that has a choice to disobey God. God created us with the ability to say no. He gave us, he made us beings of choice. My second point is this, where God guides, he always provides more than enough. John chapter 21, verse four. But when, they, uh, but when the day was now breaking, Jesus stood on the beach. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. So Jesus said to them, children, do you not have any fish, do you? 
Uh, they answered him, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find a catch. So they cast and then they were not able to haul it in because of a great number of fish. Jesus was showing them that he could provide. It's the same truth that God was trying to convey to the Israelites when he provided manna from heaven uh, for that day, and they weren't supposed to take more than what they were supposed to. He said, I want you to take enough just for one day, except for when it was the Sabbath, the day before the Sabbath. They were supposed to take enough for, for two days, but every day they were supposed to just take enough just for that one day. But they did not obey God because they didn't trust that God would provide for them the manna that they needed. And so when they didn't obey God, the manna that they took extra on the day that they weren't supposed to take extra, you know what happened? The manna was infested with what? With maggots, and it began to smell. Verse 7, Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. So when Simon heard that it was the Lord, dude jumped into the water. He, he put his outer garments on, and he was stripped for work and threw himself into the sea. He swam so excitedly, but the other disciples came in the little boat, but he beat them all there, for they were not far from the land, but about 100 yards away, dragging the net full of fish. So when they got on the land, they saw a charcoal fire already laid and fish placed on it and bread. Now this charcoal fire would remind Peter of the night that he denied Christ. The fish and the bread should have reminded them of the day that they took five loaves of bread and two fish and Jesus fed 5,000. What was Jesus proving to them that night? I am the God that will provide for you spiritually. Sure, I can take care of your physical needs as well but I want you to trust me with your spiritual needs too. And so verse 10, Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish which you have now caught. Simon Peter went up and threw the net uh, and, and drew the net uh, to the land full of large fish, 153. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. A blessing comes when we do God's will. I want to look at three final things. One, Jesus interrogation and Peter's declaration and three, my observation. Let me look at first uh, what Jesus asked Peter. Jesus asked three questions of Peter. The first is a comparative and the other is a declarative. John chapter 21 verse 15. So when they finished breakfast, Jesus said to Peter, Simon Peter, that is, he said to Simon Peter, Simon son of John, do you love me? The word love here means love that's willing to give and die even for an enemy. Like when God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son to die for all of us who were really enemies. But God loved us. He says, do you love me more than these compared to these could mean uh, disciples or fish? He said to him, Peter's declaration. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you, meaning a deep affection for him. He said to him, here's your ministry, Peter, ten, which means feed or shepherd my lambs. Now, focus on the spiritual is what he's telling him, not on the natural. Jesus didn't use the name Peter, meaning a stone, but Simon, meaning to hear or hearing. That's the name that, uh, that he had before he gave his life to Jesus. But after salvation, Jesus said, you will no longer be called that. I will call you Cephas or Peter. But after salvation, something happened. Peter lost his focus and he had lost his focus during the time of Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection. Jesus had already restored Peter privately uh, in 1 Corinthians 15. It says that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. And what that means is that Jesus appeared to Peter first before he appeared to them collectively. He met them in Matthew where he gave them their mission. But Jesus' interrogation was designed to restore Peter publicly, even though he had already talked to him privately. So the next two questions are singular in focus. Look what it says in John chapter 21 and verse 16. 
he said to him again a second time, Simon, son of John, do you have a burning love for me? That's what he's asking. A love that finds joy in someone or something. <laughs> That's what it means. He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He's saying again, I have a, a deep brotherly affection for you. And he said to him, okay, shepherd my sheep. A shepherd does what? A shepherd leads and feeds the sheep. And the sheep, he takes them, he leads them to green pastures, and he takes them beside quiet waters because sheep just don't like danger. They, they hate a lot of noise. And he said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you have a deep brotherly love for me? So Jesus changed it. And so Peter says, grieved because he had said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. In other words, you know all things about me. You know that I have a deep brotherly love for you. You know that I can't love you the way you love me. And Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. Now, here's my observation. Jesus didn't ask Peter if you loved his sheep. He didn't say that. He asked him, do you love me? Jesus asking the same question of us. Jesus' first question was comparative. Do you love me more than these? But then he focused singularly on himself. Do you love me? And that's what God is asking us today. He's asking us, do we love him more than these? So what are the these and who are the them that you love more than Jesus? The requirement for being an elder, for being a deacon, for being a teacher, for being a singer, for being a musician, for being an usher, for being a minister, is not your love for the position, but it is if you love Jesus. And if you love Jesus, you'll love leading and feeding his sheep. Peter loved fishing for food, but Jesus said, my food is to do the will of the Father who sent me and to accomplish his work. If Jesus were to interrogate you like he did Peter, how would you answer these three questions? Do you love Jesus more than anything or anyone else? Do you love Jesus with God's love? Do you love Jesus as a loyal brother? Here is what I want you to do. One, answer Jesus' questions honestly. Two, accept Jesus' correction sincerely. And three, acknowledge Jesus' restora restoration soberly. Look, let me tell you, I told you in the beginning that God has restored those wasted years that sin ate up out of my life and all the money and all that stuff. Uh, Jesus, uh, had, when he saved me, God started restoring my spirit first, and then he started restoring my thoughts, my mind, and I was renewed in my thinking, and I stopped thinking like the world and started thinking more like the Bible. And once I started thinking God's thoughts and thinking the things of the, uh, of the Bible as opposed to the things of the world that I came out of uh, as an executive, miracles started to happen. And I didn't follow God because of the miracles. No, I followed God because I love Jesus Christ. And I was willing to sacrifice anything and everything for him. Maybe you're at a point in your life right now where some things have fallen apart. Relationships are in need of restoration. You said some things this week that you're really sorry about and you've been weeping bitterly over it and your spirit has been grieved as a result of it. And God is asking you today to do something about it. You know what you can do? You can go boldly to the throne of grace where you can find grace and mercy to help you in your time of need. If you need restoration, grace and mercy is there. If you need salvation, grace and mercy is there. All you have to do is confess Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you can be saved. That's your salvation. And then after you're saved, you know we're going to still sin and do things, the wrong things and think the wrong things and, and, and all that. But you know what God says? He says, come and confess your sins to me and I will cleanse you of all unrighteousness. That's what he wants to do for you. And he wants to restore the relationship. There's something between you and God right now. And you're not as close to him as you want to be. And God knows that. And you feel it. And God is saying, come back to me. 
return to me privately, and then praise me publicly. Will you do that today? Well, privately right now, you can accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Will you pray, God, I'm a sinner. I want to be saved. I'm tired of feeling the way I'm feeling. I need your spirit to give me a refreshing. I need your spirit to restore me. I need you to restore those wasted years, those wasted minutes, those wasted hours that I gave to sin. In Jesus' name, I accept your son. In Jesus' name. Maybe you need restoration. Peter wrote, times of refreshing will come from the Lord. Maybe you need to be refreshed today. Why don't you ask God to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness? And he will do that today. And you'll watch what happened. Look, let me tell you. Uh, a weight will fall off of your soul, your spirit, and your mind, and you'll start thinking the things that you ought to be thinking. And you won't be thinking according to the, what the world says. You won't be thinking according to what comes on TV. You won't think, be thinking according to what's on Instagram or Facebook. You'll be thinking biblically, and that's how God wants you to think. Look, if you've given your life to Christ, that's a great thing. I'm going to tell you how to, how to uh, follow up on that. Hope to see you right back here next week for more All Things Are Possible with your stay-at-home pastor. Now, here's how you can get in touch with us. You've been listening to All Things Are Possible with pastor, teacher, Dr. Bernie Miller. We invite you to share your decision to follow Christ by emailing us, alex at ncf.church. That's alex at ncf.church. Friend us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. If you'd like to give, click on the giving tab at ncf.church. You can also mail your offering to New Covenant Fellowship Church, 1326 North Moore Road, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37411. Or you can give by texting NCF Church to the number 73256. That's NCF Church to the number 73256. Thank you and God bless. Thank you for listening. New Covenant Fellowship Church, a place for every race.